Hello, Rainbow. Uh, we're back here again for another Bible study this week. So glad that you have joined us virtually. Uh, before we get started with our Bible study, though, we, we want to start off with some, some good news, some things that we want to share with you that we are excited about. Uh, there are babies being born, healthy babies being born right now. Uh, Peyton and Tristan Green had their baby, Taylor Rennell Green. Uh, so very excited for them. Uh, baby Wren made her appearance on March 28th. And so we're excited for them in that. Uh, but also on that same day, on the 28th, uh, Mary White became a, a grandmother for the very first time as Jason and Lee Long. Uh, they have a new baby by the name of Evans Claire Long. Uh, so excited for all these families. And even right now, as we're recording this, my little sister's in Georgia uh, about to have uh, a baby girl. And so I'm excited about that too. Uh, hoping that this time of uh, virus will pass so I can go and, and love on her and spoil her and, and looking forward to, to meeting her when she gets here. So even in the midst of all of the, the bad news that we seem to be bombarded with every day, there's still a lot of good news. And, and I think we also always need to be mindful of that and, and praise God for the, the good things because they are here. And um, that's a good thing. Uh, one other kind of housekeeping thing that we wanted to mention is we've had several inquiries as to what is the, the best way for our members here at Rainbow to submit their weekly contribution. And so we want to answer that question real quickly. And so I'll, I'll turn that over to Justin so he can answer that for us. Yeah, we've, uh, we've got two ways for you to um, continue with your regular contribution. You can come by the church building um, Monday through Friday between the hours of 9 and 4. Uh, one of us should be here during that time, um, and you can leave that contribution with us, and we'll deposit directly into our bank account. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. No, uh, we, we'll get those funds where they're supposed to go. Um, so you can come by the church building anytime Monday through Friday between the hours of 9 to 4. Uh, we've also just set up um, some online giving options through Easy Tithe. Um, Dave has posted a video, I believe, to our Facebook page about the details for how to do that. The easiest way is... Um, if you'll watch that video, it'll, it'll show you a simple way of you just got to send a text message to um, a certain number and it'll send you back a link and you click that link and you'll be able to give. Um, so that video, again, is on our Facebook page, right? Uh, well, actually, the video is on our website. The video is on our website, not <laughs> yeah. our Facebook page. So yeah, If you look at the, if, when you go to Rainbow's website, rainbowchurchofchrist.org, at the top there's a bar and the far right it says give. You just click that and that'll be the page that you go to. There you go. That has all the online uh, details for you to, to give online. Well, cool. Thank you guys for answering that. I uh, hope that clears that up for anyone out there. Always, always appreciate your continued giving to the congregation and the, the work that continues to go here. Uh, so the three of us can still be here. Yeah. Uh, that's a good thing. Uh, you know, when we, we first started making these videos a couple weeks ago, of course, the idea at the time was this was short term you know, that we might be making two or three of these, uh, but things change rapidly, as we all know, and uh, it, it appears now as though these Bible studies in this format is going to be a, a little bit more long-term than we had anticipated. Um, hate that, you know, but it is kind of what just is what it is, and we're all going through it and all dealing with it, uh, but with that in mind, we, we decided we wanted to take this time and try to have something uh, a little more long-term in our study. And so rather than just hitting one topic, we want to do something uh, that we can continue, a theme, if you will, uh, throughout the duration of this time of study virtually. And so what we're going to be doing is we're going to be looking at 2 Peter, uh, in 2 Peter chapter 1. Uh, I'm going to begin reading in verse 5. I'll probably read through verse 9 just because I, I like the, the overall context of it. Uh, but in first, excuse me, Second Peter, Second Peter chapter one, uh, beginning in verse five, it says, "Now for this very reason also, applying all diligence in your faith, supply moral excellence, and in your moral excellence, knowledge; in your knowledge, self-control, and in your self-control, perseverance; in your perseverance, godliness, and in your godliness, brotherly kindness; in your brotherly kindness, love. For if these qualities are yours and are increasing, they render you neither useless nor unfruitful in the in the true knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ." For he who lacks these qualities is blind or short-sighted, having forgotten his purification from his former sins. Okay, so I don't want to be blind or short-sighted. You know, I want to have the these qualities or these Christian virtues uh, that God wants us to have, and He wants us to be growing in these things uh, every day in our life. 
And so that's what we're going to be doing over the next several weeks is looking at different virtues here and what they are and how they impact our life. But before we really dive into the virtues, we have to lay a foundation. And the foundation that we see here is faith. Uh, if we go back to verse 5, it tells us to uh, apply all diligence in your faith. Uh, some translations there, I believe, say add to your faith. You know, mm -hmm. Add to your faith these things. So uh, faith is going to be the foundation, again, that everything is built upon. Faith is uh, a pretty important thing. You know, as a matter of fact, there is a chapter in Hebrews, Hebrews chapter 11. Uh, the whole chapter is dedicated to men and women of faith. And what a great example that they are to us. Uh, there's no doubt that faith is essential. Uh, even like we sung moments before we started recording, even George Michael said, you got to have faith, right? So, I mean, <laughs> faith is a very important thing, but even more important than George Michael. Uh, Jesus said in John 8 verse 24, unless you believe that I am, you shall die in your sins. Uh, and then in Hebrews 11, verse 6, it tells us that without faith, it's impossible to please Him. So, again, there is no doubt that faith is essential. But what is it? You know, what, what is faith? I, I know that may seem like a rather basic uh, elementary question, um, but I think it's an important one to understand before we begin adding these virtues to them. Uh, so, biblically, probably the greatest textbook definition is Hebrews 11, uh, there in verse 1. Uh, would one of y'all like to read that for us? If you have it handy. Sure, yeah. Hebrews 11, 1. Now faith is the assurance of things hoped for, the convictions of things not seen. So what does that mean? You know, the most simplistic definition of faith that I can think of would be how our eyes are able to see the things that are physical. Our faith is the means that we see things that are, are not, things that are not visible, not physical. Um, I like this passage in particular because it talks about the words that it uses, the words like conviction, assurance, uh, hoped. It's more than just, faith is more than just kind of believing in something. Right. Almost like a, um, you know, uh, you know, yeah, I believe in God, mm -hmm. but more of a conviction. Like the word it uses, it actually uses the word conviction in English Standard, uh, as well as other translations. And that's a strong, a, a very strong word to use. And so faith, if you if you ask me, and uh, we, we often talk about you know, our own definitions of things, like Dave's definition of things would be like believing in something on steroids. <laughs> <laughs> something much more intense than just kind of having a, a, a belief in something, but more like uh, just a convicted heart. Yeah. I know it's real. Yeah. I have faith in this. I, it's a fact to me. Yeah. There's no question about it. Yeah. That's what faith is to me. And I think that's kind of what we're seeing here in Hebrews 11, 1, too. Yeah, I think... Um most of us, when we think about faith, the first thing we think about is belief. Mm -hmm. You know, it is believing in something. Mm -hmm. um, but it is deeper than that. So, mm -hmm. so a big part of faith, the bedrock of faith, is belief. But even if you look at um, this hall of faith that Hebrews 11 is, um, every one of them, when it mentions their faith, it mentions something that they did. Mm -hmm. um, so it, it, to me, faith almost has action no with it that's, that's tied into it. You know, it's, it's, you know, by faith, Abel offered to God a more acceptable mm -hmm. sacrifice. And by faith, Abraham did this. By faith, Noah did this. Sure. Um, so it's, it's also the way that you live your life because of the things that you believe in. Which would be a direct connection to the passages in James, you know, telling us that faith without works is dead. Right. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. I was thinking as, as I was preparing for this how... You mentioned the connection there and how each week I feel like we've had some sort of connection to the passage that we talked about the previous week. And Justin, you mentioned you know last week when, when in James chapter, was it James chapter 1, uh, about your definition of, of, of how you've ever always heard the biblical definition of perfect meaning, like just like a well-rounded, lacking in nothing kind of. And I thought about that as we were preparing, you know, in, Going back to Second Peter for a second, um, as he lists out these these different aspects of our you know 
what we can supplement our faith with, I think that's what he's Peter's getting at is how we become that well-rounded, mm-hmm. perfect Christian in the sense of lacking in nothing, not necessarily sinless, but that just that, like you said, well-rounded yeah. Yeah. person. Yeah. Um, Peter's spelling that out for us. Uh, and I like how we, we tend to make these connections each week. Um, what I wanted to what I want to mention though, because of what you said about that that action, you know, I think that's why Peter says, um, make every effort. Mm. You know that mm-hmm. it, being a Christian, things just don't happen to us, mm-hmm. right? You know, we we have to make every effort. Yeah, with all diligence, I think is what yeah. New American Standard says. Yeah, um, it takes action on our part. So mm-hmm. yeah, I mean, Justin, you're absolutely right. That faith, um, that's why Peter is saying make every effort to supplement your faith because it requires action on our parts. Yeah. It does. Absolutely. Absolutely. I, I think that's a wonderful definition and, and understanding of, of what faith is because there's no doubt it does run a lot deeper than just saying I believe in something, you mm-hmm. know, because you've got to have a conviction stronger mm-hmm. than that. Because sometimes, at least in my mind, uh, just saying I believe in something, it's it's tossed to and fro, you know. <laughs> it, it's it's not as solid as what it needs to be. Right. But, but faith is much... Um, it's much more grounded. It's better rooted. Uh, I, I like that word you use, David. There's a conviction there, mm-hmm. and and there's there's no doubt that that's ex- exactly uh, what it is. So, the next question then is then how do we how do we get it? Uh, and so again, we we look to scripture, and um, you know we know Romans ten verse seventeen is a passage that many of us have known. Since you know we were children, and faith comes by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Okay, so if that's how faith comes about, uh, by hearing the word of God, practically speaking, what are some good ways for our our faith to grow? Um, again, just with this with this verse, uh, faith comes by hearing, and hearing from the word of God. Hearing. Uh, through the word of Christ, uh, as my translation mm-hmm. says, uh, you got to s- just spend time in the word, yeah. and uh, and not just spend time in the word when we're together, or we used to be together on <laughs> right. Sundays and Wednesdays. Now we're yeah. virtually together on Sundays <laughs> and Wednesdays. Uh, but you have to have a personal relate to me. You have to have a personal relationship with God through His Word. Yeah. Um, I think a lot of us we we it's easy for us to say that we have a personal relationship mm-hmm. with Jesus. Um, but how many of us are willing to say, I have a personal relationship with Jesus through His Word? Right. Um, and really relying on this to, to really be the, the bedrock, a lot of, of what our faith is and in our relationship is. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we talk to God through our prayers and He speaks to us through His Word. Yeah. Um, and you're not hearing God speak to you unless you're in God's Word. That's how He speaks to us. Amen. That's how His truths are presented to us. Yeah. Um, so we have to spend time here uh, in God's Word on our own daily right. um, in order to really grow in that faith. So if we're looking for our faith, again, to be rooted in something, something that actually has substance, man, what, what soil has better substance right. than the Word of God? Yeah, yeah. yeah absolutely. Um, I'm just, just trying to think some other uh, practical ways. Um, I've really appreciated um, our small groups mm-hmm. um, and you know these passages that have been picked out for us um, and that we as a group are sharing in together mm-hmm. uh, and you know it's not only my thoughts on what the passage is for that week but I also get to hear you know 15 other Christians mm-hmm. speak on their reflections of that passage um, and it's just it's an, it's another way to mm-hmm. grow closer to other people but it's also another way to to view scripture in a way that maybe I didn't view sure. it when I came to it on my own. Absolutely. Um, and that, that is, that's been tremendous for me in my yeah. faith is to be able to share in reading God's scripture with other people. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So our faith then, again, if it's, if it's going to be what we need it to be, it's got to be based on something of substance, and there is nothing greater, no greater substance than the Word of God. And... Right now, whether we like it or not, <laughs> right now is a wonderful time oh, yeah. to take advantage of our faith growing. Uh, 
by spending more time in the Word of God, by utilizing this time that we have and have more than normal. You know, whether, again, fortunately or not, we do. Yeah. <laughs> and so why not take advantage of even these moments uh, of downtime, if you will, to really help our faith to grow and, and just really be diving into the Word maybe maybe deeper than what we have in the past. Yeah. Uh, and, and making it that personal relationship and making it about what I really believe, not just on a surface level, but what my convictions are about what the Word of God says, that's going to be my faith. So that the rest of these virtues that we'll talk about in coming weeks, those virtues then have a foundation that can be built upon and that they can actually grow from. Because, you know, if, if I don't have faith in my life, um, man, then where is moral excellence going to come from? Where is knowledge going to come from? You know, all of these virtues we're going to see, they've, they've got to begin there. You yeah. know, they've got to begin with, with faith. Yeah, I like how you use the word foundation. I know that's an illustration that's used a lot. Mm-hmm. Um, but it, you know, it, it means something to me especially. I used to work in the construction business, and having a solid foundation is extremely important. You know, physically and spiritually. Mm-hmm. Um, I know I can't tell you how many houses that you know that I had worked on that we, we would have to go up underneath the house and, and use a, like a bottle jack to jack up the foundation because through, through the years, if it didn't have a good solid foundation, that house begins to kind of crumble. Yeah. It comes to the floor sag and everything comes uneven and yeah. it's just it's a mess. Um, but if it had been done right the first time, then they may not have ran into as many issues with this kind of thing. Yeah. And so it's so important for us to understand how important that foundation is in our spiritual life, especially when it comes to our faith, is that let's not get ahead of ourselves. Let's not start trying to, to pile so much on us if we don't have the foundation right. Right. Uh, let's start there. Yeah. And let's build that up and let's make sure that there's a strong foundation there because... Um, if we don't want to see other aspects of our Christian life crumble, mm-hmm. especially when the first storm comes around, mm-hmm. um, we need to work on our faith. Yeah, amen. Because uh, I think it's, uh, I can't tell you how many times we've probably seen as ministers, people, they go through something very trying, and the first thing they want to do is blame God mm-hmm. or question God. or And, and a lot of that is, is natural. That mm-hmm. Those are human emotions. Uh, but if we start working on our faith now and start preparing for those moments in our lives where uh, they're difficult, then we can do a little more leaning on God yeah. in those moments instead of wondering or questioning or blaming. Yeah. Yeah. And I think, I think right now we're all trying to find positives in our mm-hmm. life, mm-hmm. Um, you know, with, with everything that's going on. And I think a lot of us have. Mm-hmm. A lot of people have really made the best mm-hmm. of what the situation uh, has brought upon us. And I think the best decision we can make is if that foundation is not where we want it, uh, what better time to start than now? Absolutely. Right. We, our, I agree. our schedules have totally changed. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, we have so much more time at home. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I, I've, I've heard it said before, you know, it takes two weeks to kind of establish a routine or two weeks for, mm-hmm. for a habit to form. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, we're probably going to be, you know, continuing down this path for at least two more weeks, right. at least, you know, right. mm-hmm. uh, and probably longer. Um, what better time? Yeah. To, to decide right now, you know what, for this season of my life, mm-hmm. um, I'm, I'm just going to call it the, the season of Justin living in the Word. Mm-hmm. And, <laughs> and I'm going to be in the Word as much as I can be. Yeah. Uh, because, I mean, I, I see people post all the time, like, hey, what Netflix shows are you watching right, right. now? Because I'm tapped out. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Uh, and, <laughs> and I think we're tapped out of a lot of things, like, like yeah. Netflix. And, and instead of maybe trying to search extra hard on Netflix to find the new show to watch, mm-hmm. uh, spend an extra 30 minutes Amen. in God's Word. Yeah. Um, like I said, we're, we're trying to find positives in this, and I don't think there's a greater positive mm-hmm. than deciding, you know what, I'm going to start spending more time in my Word. And especially for families um, and our parents right now, our parents, if you start modeling this for your children, uh, your mm-hmm. children are copycats, mm-hmm. um, and your children learn from what you do. Mm-hmm. So, if, if our, especially if our parents will start modeling this right now, I think they will be amazed by what our children will start doing um, in response to that as well. Absolutely, I agree. I'm learning that um, lesson right now every day. I have to you know, Ben watches everything that we do, 
and me and Jessica just the other night were having a conversation of, you know, making sure we watch what we say in the sense of not necessarily saying things we shouldn't say, but even having adult conversations about topics we may not necessarily want Ben to mm-hmm. be in. Right. Uh, those seem like the moments that he listens the most, mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> you know, uh, and so. Yeah. Yeah, they're they're sponges, yeah. and they're they're watching us, and they're they're listening to us. And if we set this example for them now, especially it, you know, at my at my house where I have such a, a young one, um, this that standard to set that standard for him at such a young age and say this is this is how this is the most important thing in our lives, mm-hmm. and this is the practice that we're going to do now, and especially even when things get back to normal, mm-hmm. I, let's keep it a part of our everyday lives even then yeah Uh, Yeah. because I think a lot of people are realizing just how busy they were Mm -hmm. of how much stuff they had in their lives now that we don't have baseball practice or soccer practice or whatever whatever sport is going on right Right. now (laughs) Um, people are realizing how much time those things took up in their lives and and yeah like there's only so many Netflix shows right there's only so many office or seasons of the office that you can watch you know and and so, Scripture, man, there's so much in Scripture that we can learn. Mm-hmm. And while, yeah, there's only so much Scripture, but there's a lot. Yeah. yeah there Absolutely. is a lot. And there are a lot of lessons. It's almost like endless lessons. Yeah. Mm-hmm. As every time, even if you read the same chapter three times, you might learn three different things. Mm-hmm. And so, yeah, it's a perfect time. To, and to and dive I'll, into I'll say this too. Uh, if we as ministers can be any kind of resource to you, mm-hmm. um, we want to do that. We want to be resources for you. So maybe you are in the situation where it's like, okay, I do want to spend more time in the Word with my family, but I don't know where to start. Mm-hmm. Uh, any of us would love to help you um, in that in any way that we can. Uh, if it's encouragement, we'd love to encourage you. If it's yeah. here's some studies, here's some verses, um, you know, zoom me in at your house and yeah. I'll I'll <laughs> help help there too. Uh, I know you know Blake sent out a phone tree yeah. today, which, we, which or yesterday, which I thought was great. Um, just offering help, and uh, and we want to do that. We want to help uh, our members at Rainbow in any way that we can. Absolutely. We may be disconnected physically from you, but we still want to be connected in any way we can be. Mm-hmm. And so if there's anything that you need, just reach out. Call us. Uh, most of you have our, our numbers, and if you don't, you can find it on a bulletin. You can go online to the website and find it on our bulletin. Uh, we are here for you. Uh, we love you, we care about you, and we care about your, your physical needs and your spiritual needs. And so if you need anything at all, just, just reach out to us. Yep. We're here. This about brings our, our Bible study to a conclusion for this evening. Uh, I'm going to ask Dave to say a prayer for us in just a moment. But before he does, I want to encourage you to spend this next week um, in God's Word. You know, not just this week, but even weeks follow. But especially in this next week, go to Hebrews 11 and, and read all about those men and women of faith. And, and then go back to the Old Testament, you know, and read their stories to, to really get a big picture, you know, and a big understanding uh, of who these individuals were, these men and women that were so special, so unique, but just as human as all of us, and that, that they would be remembered for their faith. Um, and hopefully that's a goal that we would all share, you know, that when our time on this earth is done, that we would be remembered for our faith. Mm-hmm. Because again, we know that without it, we can't, we can't please God. <laughs> so this has got to be the foundation, understanding what this faith looks like and, and what an impact that it can make. So read Hebrews 11, learn more and more about those men and women of faith, learn from their example, And we'll continue this study next week with more of these virtues now to build off this foundation of faith. We look forward to seeing you then. Again, if you need anything else, just call us, text us, just reach out to us. We're here. We love you. And we want to do all we can to get through this together. Dave? All right, let's pray. Father, we come to you this evening. We're so thankful for this time that we have to study your word. Father, we're thankful for the opportunity that we have, even during this time of social distancing, that we still have avenues of ways that we can connect with one another, Father, to study your word, to worship you. Mm-hmm. Father, we're, we're so thankful for the love that you have shown us in our lives, 
We're so thankful for all the blessings you have given us. And Father, we just pray that every day that we, we recognize that those good things, all those good things come from you, Father, and we give you glory and honor for what you do in our lives. Father, we pray that you will help us to really take up advantage of this time, Father, mm-hmm. this time that we have discovered that we have so much more free time than uh, we've had in the past, that we might use that time to our benefit, to our spiritual lives, to our faith, Father. Help us to look into your word. Find, help us to have the motivation and the desire to look more into your word, Father, to build our faith. Mm-hmm. We know that your word is the best way we have to learn more about you, and your desire for us in our lives. So, Father, just encourage us to continue to build upon that faith, Father, that we have. Help us going forward in the future weeks to remain in study of your word, Father. Help us to stay motivated. Help us to stay positive. We know a lot's going on in this country, and Father, we, we know that it's can be scary. But Father, help us to continue to lean on you. Uh, We know that we can find peace in you, Father. And so we pray that we just every day we remain looking towards you. Father, thank you so much for your son. We're we're just beyond grateful, Father, of your willingness to send him to earth, to live amongst us, Father, to teach us, to show us Father, to be servants of you and how to love. But most importantly, we're so grateful for his willingness to give his life on the cross. We know that through that blood we have the forgiveness of sins, Father. And we pray that every day we strive to honor that sacrifice. Help us continue to be the followers of you that you would have us to be, to continue to try, strive every day to live faithfully for you. Once again, Father, thank you for everything that you do and all these things we ask in your Son's name. Amen. Amen.